Peace. It's Bronzeberg. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. So today's conversation is going to be about this conference, this press conference with Peter Buttigieg, who uh, came forward and you know had this conversation about how a lot of this infrastructure in the U.S. had put so-called Black people to a disadvantage, and you know basically talking about the form of redlining and all these different things and stuff like that. Uh, my sentiment has always been the same. They've always constructed so-called Black people to go into urban areas. And I've seen things recently that happen in which, you know, your, your sneaky president, um, Jim Crow, Jim, uh, uh, the Crow, Joe, Joe Biden, the Crow, whatever. I don't know what they call them, Crow Joe Biden. I forgot what they call him. Um, the fact of the matter that he's doing like crazy things under the nose, or they've been doing it for years, probably in the Trump administration as well, where you know they've been giving a lot of hard time to black farmers, but they've been giving a lot of problems to farmers in general. And then you know the whole entire scapegoating issue about Monsanto, and you know the fact of the matter they're taking away a lot of these acres of land from these farmers, and then putting these immigrant workers in there in order to you know some crazy stuff out there, you know what I'm saying? But getting to this point about the conversation, this is gonna be my first time viewing the video. So you guys are gonna be uh, looking at the video while I'm looking at the video for the first time. And a lot of this stuff is just pure knowledge. He's gonna be talking about one of these figures that's known for being a, a planner, a city planner and this, that and the third. Like the guy was a, a complete racist and um, when we're talking about liberalism, it is it is a fair understanding that you know these projects did take place. But um, I'm just going to narrate on this video with you guys so that you guys could just see exactly where I'm coming from and my thought process on this. So, Pete, the Biden administration is laser focused on the issues affecting everyday Americans, like how roads are racist. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says the new infrastructure bill will address that. The thing about it is, is before she begins, I believe the Biden administration or just the so-called white rulership at this point, because basically their time is up. Now they have to leak out the secrets. Now they have to leak out all these different things that so-called black people have been saying for a very long time. Before it was just kind of one of those sort of things, they ignored it. And they was just kind of like, yeah, that happened, but so what? And now, so the Biden administration, a lot of these liberals is probably pandering to the liberal so-called blacks in order to have this conversation now and talk about this new bill that's gonna be passed. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know how long you take it. I mean, the damage has already been done. We already have an understanding that the urban areas was pretty much the haven for so-called black people, but the suburbs were not keen or ideal for so-called black people to be in. But this should give no excuse to so-called black people to understand that even if you come from low income or no, low finances, you should be working your way up to get to a comfortable spot in life so that you can afford exactly a well better living condition. You know, and I understand that when it comes to certain places that community boards and all these different things out there will make it harder on so-called black people, but you can find, if there's a will, there's a way, you understand? Can you give us the construct of how you will deconstruct the racism that was built into the roadways that you talked to the Rio earlier? I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. He's talking about Robert Moses, and I think a lot of people who's watching this page knows exactly who Robert Moses is. Robert Moses did not, was one of those type of, was a city planner that didn't believe in having more public transportation available for New York City. He was a racist. <laughs> I, I was about to say he's a Marxist, but he definitely was a racist. He was an environmental racist. And the thing about it is what he's talking about is the fact of the matter that he was constructing all these expressways in Long Island and, and, and uh, creating these short overpasses and all this other stuff so that uh, it would restrict so-called black people going into Long Island or going to places like Jones Beach. 
in Suffolk County. Like, yeah, he was a racist. And the fact of the matter is the, the most notable thing that a lot of people talk about with Robert Moses is that he actually moved, he's actually responsible for why the, the LA Dodgers is the LA Dodgers of today. Because originally the Dodgers was a baseball team in Brooklyn. Um, and also the fact of the matter that he's responsible for the Cross Bronx Expressway, which divided, directly divided the, the white, the so-called whites and the so-called blacks in the 40s where the Northern Bronx was supposed to be a haven for so-called white people, and the South Bronx was supposed to be where the so-called blacks and so-called Latinos and so-called minorities were supposed to be, based off of his city planning. Yeah, he was definitely a racist. Trees can apparently be racist. Vice President Kamala Harris asking NASA about it. Can you measure um, trees? Part yes. of that data that you're referring to in, in EJ's environmental justice, but you can also track by race there are averages in terms of the number of trees in the neighborhood where people live. <laughs> Good old Kamala Harris, that that fake bitch is <laughs> out there talking all this stuff out here with NASA like she gives a damn. Yeah, I guess because the pressure is coming on her because her rating and approval ratings is going down. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, look, listen, I, I don't deny at all when it comes to this city planning and city development that they do a lot of fuck shit when it comes to so-called black neighborhoods and all this other stuff. And especially when the great migration happened in the 40s and 50s about how they was trying to get so-called black people to go to some projects. I get it. But I tell y'all, politicians already know all this stuff. They just want to go ahead and pander to you so-called black people because they know that talking about racism will get y'all hyped up. You understand? This is the Kamala Harris is, I, I, y'all know me on this channel. I do not support Kamala Harris. I mean, I understand, uh, you know, Democrats and Republicans are the, the same, it's part of the same coin. They still do not believe on helping you so-called black people. You understand? We lost the war. Kamala Harris is just a shill. She's not here for y'all. Racist, Greg. Well, I, I gotta say, uh, Mayor P looks great. Clearly, he's lost the baby weight. <laughs> so, uh, this is the problem with the everything is racist prism because you can apply it to any everything, and it's very seductive because it makes the user seem educated and clever when it's merely kind of repeating something that you already heard. He just heard those stories. So he repeats it and it comes out as, wow, this is really interesting. But it's actually not an original thought, but it's an acceptable thought at cocktail parties. The problem is with this, how does his policy or the policy based on this affect the actual outcome? Right. Like, where are you going to change the bridges or the streets? What if the changes are actually really good for everybody? Like, what if they, the improvements on this racist, you know, bridge actually is beneficial? Why did you have to bring this up? If, but if you don't have a specific solution for this, but you brought it up anyway, then it's- The thing about it is the way, again, this is why I have this conversation with so-called black people to read between the lines and see the BS that a lot of these politicians, especially these liberals and these Democrats put towards you. You understand? My thing about it is, is Peter Buttigieg, he's a liberal. A lot of people cape him up because he's a so-called gay man. And what you know and understand about the LGBTQ community is that they always try to affiliate themselves to the emotionality of so-called Black people so that they're able to sit up there and say, I understand your struggle and I want to work with you, okay? This is, this is something I've always noticed. So it doesn't surprise me politicians like Peter Buttigieg is going to go ahead and have these conversations about the racist environmental things that Robert Moses did during the 1930s until about the 1950s and 60s, okay? Like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's nothing else to talk about. These stories are not new. That's why I agree with this, man. It's not new. It's not a new story. It's not a new concept. But for some odd reason, people think that there's going to be a change to this whole entire thing. It's not. These bridges is going to remain. These expressways is going to remain. All these different things is going to remain the same, okay? especially you live in an urban area, the inner city, ain't nothing gonna change. And this is why I believe these blue states do more harm than good, which is probably gonna be a video I'm gonna touch on more this week. But just to get off of that in my mind, like it's not gonna change, fam. It's a pretty obvious virtue signal to appear thoughtful and, and, and progressive and woke, 
but I just I woke in pandering. I have to say that so people can understand exactly what I'm talking about. They're pandering. I, I'm interested to see when this is all done, where they're going to point to and go, see, this was the, this was the bridge I was talking about. Express Box Express, right? I could point to it. So I what are you going to do with it? The, the question is, you don't use this money for social engineering. I mean, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's what's disappointing to me. Hey, what they going to do? They're going to go ahead and come to New York City and they're going to talk about all oh, the Cross Bronx Expressway. We got to fix it because it's racist. <laughs> like, uh, what, what else y'all going to do? Y'all going to go ahead and, and, and do the thing. Y'all going to go over to the, 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 the Triborough Bridge and be like, that was racist. Like, look, I've, I've read upon that. They've had the, what is it? They had programs specifically towards minorities in the 1930s of, you know, given all this environmental studies and i forgot what it's called because i had a conversation with someone on that like i believe it started in like 1937 or around that time and it was given more of these fundings to minorities at the time to go ahead in these art programs and all these different things out here but but just to make my point um you know the, it, what is the solution from this is something that i would add into this conversation what is the solution because it, it, what, what is it going to say towards so-called black people that live in this inner city. And my thing about it is, are so-called black people willing to improve themselves if governed the opportunity of not having a handout from the government? This is where we get into this whole entire, you know, conversation of like, like, okay, we can dawn on history because it did happen. And I will never deny that the US government has not done racist things towards so-called black people, especially on environmental factors. But now in 2021, where are we moving the needle where are we where where are we moving the pin in the needle where are we moving it because like i said peter Buttigieg just finding out about this and what how old is this man he's in his 40s and i'm younger than this man and i already knew about this story the whole entire time because i was taught this in school and because i learned and i researched this myself like come on man like like you can obviously see exactly what the point is about this Eisenhower's interstate system was the grandest, greatest public works project that was oh, since the Erie Canal. It yes, public works. That's the program that um, I was mainly uh, talking about, public works. It opened up America for everybody. It benefited everybody, rich people, poor people, black people, white people, Asian people, Hispanic people. Everybody benefited. If we start with Pete Buttigieg leading the way to point at these projects, like to change the bridge over the Cross Bronx Expressway, which works fine now, people have adjusted. Instead of building new bridges or repairing the bridges that exist and tunnels and roadways and making Wi-Fi available for everybody, it, and it's gonna be in the hands of the same racially oriented politicians that we used to call poverty pimps when I was the lawyer for the Young Lords. Poverty pimps, they work, they, 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 they jockey these programs, they find out what's happening. If you make this a social program, a social welfare program, which is what built- Well, I hate to burst a lot of people's bubbles and you know, specifically so-called black people still affiliated with uh, this party in general. I still believe that Democrats are poverty pimps. You know, I, I do believe that, especially when you live in these blue states, I definitely do believe Democrats, for all facts of the matter, is poverty pimps, you know. But like I told y'all before, I, I, don't, I don't stand for any uh, political party because I believe they're the same. They're, they act different, but they are the same, okay? Like, there's no difference to me between Republicans and Democrats. They just, they just do things a little bit differently, but they're, they're part of the same... Thing. They're part of the same organization. They're part of the same thing. They're not looking for any improvements with so-called minorities. Everything is for you to stay stagnant and not elevate, in my opinion. Build back better, it's supposed to be. But if you make infrastructure, social welfare, what you're going to get is nothing. At the end of the, at the, end of the line, you're going to have that money squandered. Mm. I have a theory about why Buttigieg would be talking about this now, but it's to Greg's point. Anytime you like talk about racism and call someone or a group of people racist, you're trying to get them scared and to back off and to kind of butt out. And so, Dana, I wonder, to, to Raldo's point, it's because they want power and control over that money and they don't want anybody to ask any questions. It's not going to get built on taking down overpasses. It's going to get built on things that aren't roads and bridges and actual infrastructure. Well, also, it says it's, it's, it's a billion dollars to remedy. So what's the, what's the remedy, mm -hmm. right? And, and that could also be said about the tree issue and tree equity. 
Um, I understand what you're saying. Like more trees in a place is, is a good thing. And if you look at a place like, I believe it's Greenville, South Carolina, 25 years ago, there was this big push to put trees down the main street. And there was a big controversy. It was going to cost too much money. Now it's like lovely because the trees are built and the, uh, built. the trees have grown up. It's shady. It's a beautiful street to shop along. It benefits everyone. And I think. Well, what you have to understand is a lot of this stuff becomes, there's too many politics that come into this conversation, especially about the environment where they want to build more trees. But at the same time, America is the same place that's still trying to take land from the Aboriginal Americans or Native Americans in their nations and their tribes and all this other stuff and, and all, this, all this BS that they don't want to apologize for. I don't give a damn if they got reparations. They are still doing grimy shit to Native Americans as we speak. And then they're going to sit up there and talk about growing more trees and all this other stuff. And then the fact of the matter is, did they ever truly apologize for redlining towards so-called Black people? Probably not. But at the same time, if this is a whole entire thing that we're having a conversation about, I would, I would advise so-called Black people do exactly what those so-called Black people did in Georgia, which is probably another video that I'm going to do this week, in which I was talking, which was talks about how so-called black people decided to purchase 19 acres of land in Georgia and start sitting up there and having land for themselves. What is the problem? That if there's so-called black people out there that earn enough money, you making over six figures and all this dumbass talks about high value this and high value that, stop focusing on these damn bras and start focusing on land ownership. <laughs> like, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not trying to be sponsored by no damn program um to, to to rightfully own some damn land especially if it was ever taken away from my family in in centuries or years before this whole redlining thing and this that and the third it all it is is about keeping you people stagnant and the fact of the matter that you want to bring race into this hoping that politicians like peter Buttigieg is going to do something about it is completely asinine i think that if, what the voters were saying last tuesday is that we can support things that support everybody, but we don't want to be put in these different categories. We might need to right some wrongs in the past, but then again, the remedy, as I say here, is going to actually benefit everyone because we, are, we don't have that society that, like we used to have. Justin? I did a deep dive on this. No, today. you didn't. <laughs> deep, uh, deep really for did. me. Oh, wow. And what I found out that, yes, race was a factor in some of the design of the interstate highway system, granted but class was a much bigger factor. Mm. Poor white and black neighborhoods were carved up by this highway system because it's much easier to seize a poor neighborhood through eminent domain. You put the artery into the downtown shopping district and the artery out to the suburbs for the commuters, and that's how it's done. And yeah, the whole entire thing, especially with the automobile boom, especially by the 40s and 50s, the whole plan was to create more of the suburban type of uh, towns and all this other stuff. And then the cities would just be remote for those that just want to work and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I remember that. I, I remember having a discussion. I remember the history back on that. You know what I'm saying? And the whole entire thing that happened around the 50s and 60s, all the racism that started to come into that about how they didn't want so-called Black people moving into their neighborhoods and all that other stuff. I, I remember all that. Yeah, I do. But just to get back to the topic of this conversation, Yes, I will say history is important. And I do honor so-called black people that, you know, do the steady research, which I'll advise a lot of so-called black people to do, in which they find out if there is land that's owed to their family. Because so-called white people do it all the time. But I would advise so-called black people, you need to do the same thing. You need to research your family lineage and see what land you're owed because I'm pretty sure there's land out there that's owed to, to our brothers and sisters. And, you know, the government don't, doesn't want you to know that, but you should be able to know that. You understand? They went into German, Italian, Jewish neighborhoods, all white people, and they just carved them up. How many times have you heard the phrase, this poor white neighborhood on the wrong side of the tracks? There's always a- Yeah, and then, you know, especially they had that whole entire thing with uh, the so-called Jewish people uh, you know, they had a hard time in, in certain instances, uh, the Germans, like, especially the immigrants before, like, the 1900s, you know, the Irish, the Germans, and all this other stuff, they didn't even want to, they didn't even want to be associated with them. They was like, those are poor white people, you know what I mean? Especially when I did the conversation about a Seneca village, it was a so-called black 
town, but it had uh, populations of Germans and Irish. So, you know, that, that's one of the sort of things that gets discussed a lot. The wrong side of the tracks, and it's not black, it's not white, it's about rich and poor. And that's how they did this. So just because we have to fix a part of the system doesn't mean the system was racist. It just means some of it was designed by idiots. <laughs> Most of the problems we have in this country are because of idiots, not because of racists. And what these idiots are doing in the Biden administration is they're saying, we're going to start destroying highways and we're going to replace these highways with mass transit. We don't want mass transit. Mass transit's been on the decline for the last 15 years. We just came out of a pandemic where people are leaving cities. People were working remotely. The last thing we need are more trains and subways and buses. So they're just going to jam this down our throat. What's going to happen? The big Well, my theory on why they want to create more transport transportation opportunities is to get rid of cars, right? Um, the thing about it is, is that a lot of these ploys out here and why they want to go ahead and use transportation and all this other stuff, which goes into my theory about surveillance, about the big brother being able to track you so that they're able to say, you bought a ticket at this location and such and such. And it also goes into the monetary thing. The fact of the matter that you're going to be able to be surveillance on public transportation, that you won't, you can walk everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. There's all these different things. You don't need a car because a car institutes what? freedom freedom to move around and drive you don't have to have a camera in your car unless you want to but when you're on public transportation cameras everywhere when you're walking around the streets cameras everywhere that's something that i truly believe in the biden administration they could say the biden administration all they want it's bigger than the biden administration this is why i don't really care for politics like that i say that i'm apolitical because the whole entire thing is, this is something from the upper echelons of society. Do what thou will. They're out there doing this stuff because they're wanting to be able to control people and be able to know your movements at all times. That's the reason why they do stuff like this. That's why they're calling for more tra transportational, transportation efforts instead of more uh, stuff to benefit people who drive in cars did. Remember Boston? Yeah. They tried to rip up their whole highway system and it took 25 years yep. and the cost was five times as bad. And it just created more drama and more, I don't know, congestion, which creates more emissions. So you're going to now see a boondoggle a la the big dig in every single city and every single place where this build back matter uh, money is going to go. And you're just going to look back and you say, Jesse Waters was right. <laughs> We do that all that the time. will come right to my mind. First out Damn, that Jesse was right. Always right. <laughs> Always looking for the opportunity to use the word boondoggle. Boondoggle. I love billion dollar boondoggle. Yes. Say it with okay. Buddha it, It's his. It's actually. He looks great, Buddha by the way. Yeah, he really does. He really has lost you know, that. What a bounce way. back. Usually it takes months. <laughs> But you know, I think he was on the treadmill. Yeah, he, he did. got the, the one treadmill they couldn't <laughs> get. Yes. One Peloton. Yeah. And that's pretty much the end of the video. I don't need to hear them talk about Peter Buttigieg's appearance. I'm just getting to the nitty gritty of the point. Uh, I mean, if you, if you really want to understand what this is all about, the ploy in it, besides the whole entire thing of uh, pulling on the hamstrings of so-called Black people's emotions, then it's also just about the whole entire thing with Agenda 2030, which is something I definitely do believe that they're doing. This is the reason they keep talking about transportation all the time. And watch they try to put in institutes like scooters bikes and all this other stuff and then like you know more trains and more buses in your city you understand uh more autonomous vehicles more of these cars more of these different things out here for surveillance it's all a hold on you to get rid of freedom and i mean i'm not gonna say like i'm a saint in this i just recognize it and i understand what's going on i'm not stupid the thing about it is i understand it's going on might i still be a participant in this maybe so maybe so but at the end of the day, <laughs> just recognize the BS. Peter Buttigieg, who just, just understood the story, like, come on now. You understand? And Kamala Harris trying to play like she care, talking about oh, tr tracking trees by racism. <laughs> I mean, these politicians is playing y'all, man. Like, I don't even start out. I mean, look, listen. It, yeah, I mean, especially the Grio. The Grio is just a whole entire liberal cesspool of bullshit for so-called Black people.
So, I mean, at the end of the day, do what you can do, man. Understand exactly what's going on. Peace.